Hi and welcome to the channel. Now if you're planning on building an observatory, then hopefully this video should definitely help you out. So this is part three of my new series of videos and I'm building the roof. So let's get into the video. So because I didn't have the walls built, I had to put these little uprights of um, timber to hold the ridge board up, a little piece at each end. And once I'd got the ridge board on, I could then add the rafters to it. And I've added the flat ceiling joists on, which will actually uh, tie the rafters together. I've kept them high to give me a little bit of extra height inside the observatory. So I've kept the pitch of the roof quite low. It's only 22 and a half degree pitch. And that's because I didn't want the roof to be any steeper and interfere with the view of the scope. So the rafter length is 1.3 meters long and the flat part of the ceiling, the length of those timbers were about 1.1 meters. And I doubled up the rafters on the ends. So as I don't have all the wheels yet, I've got all the track, I've only got half the wheels, so I can't actually fit them on yet. So I've spaced it out the distance what the track and the wheels will be so that I can actually start building the roof. And this is the gap it'll actually be once the track on wheels are on. So I've used three by two timber, treated timber rafters. Um, these are uh, tie pieces. They brace it all together and strengthen the roof up. Got a six by one for a ridge board across the top there. And what I'm now about to do is to use this 11 mil OSB board and I'm going to screw a piece on across here on the on the slope of the rafters and then on the flat piece and then again on the other slope the other side and what that will do it'll act as a diagonal bracing and it should keep the whole roof square and stop it from ringing and twisting because i obviously want it to be nice and square so that it runs out nicely on the tracks and keep it all nicely in shape so I'm now going to cut the OSB board and screw that onto the underside of these rafters. I've clamped the OSB to the underside of the rafters, so it's going to make it easy for me to fix it and screw it on. This piece up. I'm going to clamp the other end. Now I can get this center piece screwed up. So I've now got to trim all these rafter feet back. I'm going to give it about four or five inches overhang, cut it back, cut them vertical, and then I'll be ready to put the face board on. So the first thing I did was mark 150 mil away from the wall. And then with the uh, spirit level, I marked a vertical line at each end. And then I used the chalk line to mark the top of the rafters. Here I'm using a bevel, which I set the angle using the line that I made with the spirit level. And then I went along and marked all the other rafters. Once I got them all marked up, all I had to do was go along and cut the ends of the rafters. And they're all cut to the same length and angle. So I cut the feet off the rafters. And that's how it's looking. Strapping it up nicely. I'm pleased to say my other four wheels for the roof have turned up. So I've now got eight of these and they look very good quality. 
and they should do the job nicely. So now I've managed to get the shape of the roof. It's not complete yet. I've still got to board it on the other side. I'm going to insulate it and then board it on top of the rafters. This is the underside of the roof. But I've managed to build the wall up to the underside of the roof with the correct shape and size. I've left that gap there so that this roof will slide over the top of that gap there. And I will be filling it up with a rubber seal. And, and the area above the door is where my motor is gonna go. So I came up with the idea of these two metal plates. And the idea is to have one plate either side of the wall, because the wall is only three by two timber, it's not particularly strong. And I've had these bolts welded on uh, the inside plate. So that's where the motor is gonna be fixed. And then I will drill through the entire wall and bolt the two plates together. So that's really gonna give it some strength and the motor will be removable because those bolts will be exposed on the inside of the observatory. Make sure I get my posts for the rails in a straight line. I pulled a string line through. It lines up exactly with the edge of the roof. And I shall plumb down a spirit level from the line down to the post support. That's it, Corey. If you dig that post hole for me. Yeah. Put the dirt in the dumper truck. Well done. Gotta get right down there. Gotta dig a big post hole. Doing a good job, mate. Right, you got a load, Corey. Let's take it around to the skip. That's it. All right, so these are the holes for my posts. I've got to put some concrete in there and get the post support set in. And I've got Corey helping me do that. We're doing a good job, aren't we, Corey? Yeah. I've finally got my post supports. These are made out of stainless steel. That may both be bolted to the concrete and the post will sit in this little cup here and be screwed through the sides. So if I ever have to remove the posts for any reason, they're not going to be concrete into the ground. All I've got to do is undo the screws and I can swap the posts over. So I'm now going to concrete these pads and set these post supports on top of the pad. There's one there, and there's one in the corner there. These are gonna hold up my posts. So I'm setting the base plate on this pad stand here. And I'm gonna put the stainless steel threaded rod into the concrete. Right here, I've marked on the wall uh, where the post is going to come, and I'm now transferring the line down to the actual post support with my spirit level to make sure that the post will sit nicely in that little post holder. So I'm just positioning a post holder on the concrete pad in exactly the right place. Right, so I've just put a little recess in this post, a slot, so it's gonna slot into the top of the post for 15 mil. It'll just keep it nicely in place. So as you can see, I'm having to work inside the garage because we're having a hailstorm. So what I'm doing here is these metal plates they're six mil thick and I'm screwing them to the side of my timber posts and what that's going to do is 
prevent the posts from twisting. So these are my top rails, which is what the roof is going to roll out onto. So I obviously want that to stay square. So the idea of the steel plates is to prevent the post from twisting and keeping it nice and straight. So I'm going to pre-drill the holes. And these are six by 80 screws, so they should do the job nicely. jack the roof up so I can get access to where I've got to put the wheels and drag on do that on both sides and hopefully it should work nicely we'll find out shortly and get the roof finally move on out so right now I'm making up some props and then we're gonna lift the roof up and move it out of the way so I've jacked the roof up and I've exposed that side and now the plan is to get the rail all along this uh, beam here and fit the wheels on the underside of the roof. And then I'll move it all over uh, to the other side so I can get access to this side. So I've used a string line here so I could pull a straight line for the track. That looks fairly straight. So the idea of this Summertex insulation is to try and keep it cool in the summer and warmer in the winter and try and maintain a sort of even temperature. Uh, I may have to put a little bar heater in during the winter and possibly install a fan for the summer. We'll have to wait and see how that one goes. But if I get this insulation in, then it's a good start. So did putting insulation in the roof and the walls help? Let's find out. It is so hot out here today. Let's just have a look at this. So shown 32.5 degrees. But the interesting question is, how hot is it inside the observatory? What have we got? 27.8. Okay, that's, um, that's around five whole degrees lower in this observatory which goes to show that the insulation I have in the roof and the walls are clearly working. And just by touch, you can feel, everything just feels cool. I mean, this is obviously metal and the metal is feeling cool. If this was inside a normal shed, I hate to think what the temperature would be. An uninsulated shed with 32 degrees outside would be probably 40 degrees or more in here. Anyway, there we go, 27.8, so um, five degrees lower. So I think we can say 
my insulation has worked. It's doing its job. Well, I hope you liked that video and even found it useful. And if you've got any questions about that part of the build or any other parts coming to that, please leave the questions in the comments below and I will do my best to answer all of them. So in the next video, I'm gonna be fitting the door, uh, finishing off the hardy plank walls and installing the motor. So if you wanna check that video out, make sure you hit that subscribe button and you won't miss when I upload that video. So I just gotta say now a big thanks to all of my subscribers. Thanks for watching. And as always, I wish you all clear skies.